In this Clues training video, we're going to review the new document export function which has been added to Clues in version 3.3. The document export function picks up where the data transfer manager left off. You may have used the data transfer manager to import people and sources from Legacy Family Tree, Roots Magic, the Master Genealogist, or GEDCOMS. You could also export people and sources when working with Legacy. If you're not familiar with this capability for importing and exporting, watch the video titled Working with Other Databases found at the Videos tab on clues.com. The Document Export function, as the name implies, allows you to export the information and documents. Clues will take the information it has and turn it into events in other programs. As of version 3.3, though, you can only export data to Legacy. We hope to expand this type of support to the other programs sometime in the future. So let's see what this capability is all about. Notice that when I right-click on a document, no export command appears. Before I can start performing document exports, I need to first set a legacy file as the primary external file. I do this by clicking the External File Links button on the Explorer bar. Here is where you will designate which legacy database you want to work with. Since you might use several different legacy files in your research, you need to designate one of them as primary. But what if you haven't interfaced clues to legacy yet? Just go down to the commands under the external file links button and click on the copy data to from legacy item. A dialog box comes up for you to locate and select the legacy file you want to use. Legacy databases have an extension of FDB. Now I'll go ahead and select the file. The data transfer manager comes up, but I don't want to do anything in it right now, so I'm just going to close it. Now the legacy file we want to work with is shown on the list of external files. I'll right click it and indicate I want to set it as the primary file. Now it shows up in bold on the list of external files. Back on the people grid, I can now right click and turn on the display of RIN numbers for the legacy file. Of course the column is blank because we haven't linked any people and clues to their record in legacy. Sometimes people get confused by this linking terminology and how it is really done. For each external file that you associate with clues, it maintains a table that tracks which record identification number, or RIN, in that file goes with a particular clues ID. When a RIN appears for a person, it is said to be linked to legacy or whichever external database you are using. What you see on the screen will always refer to the external file currently designated as primary. These links are set up in one of several ways. First, by importing the person in the Data Transfer Manager. Second, by manually editing the value in the RIN column on the right half, or the clues side, of the Data Transfer Manager, or finally, using the new document export capability, which is what I'm going to be focusing on in this video. When performing document exports, I find it helpful to have Legacy running at the same time. I also like to display the RIN numbers by each person's name, which is controlled by checkboxes on the View tab of the Customize window in Legacy. Okay, now let's go to the Census document I've already entered. This Census document not only provides information on where people lived at that point in time, 
but in the details for each person, we can see information indicating the time frame of their birth, their occupation, the list goes on, all of which correspond to different events and legacy. I've indicated the source and repository, and I attached an image file of the census page to the document. Now you can see the list of people linked to the document. Note that this household includes a son-in-law and a grandchild. This will come up again in a later step. Since we have a legacy database designated as primary, an additional command appears when we right-click the document. I'll click this new export item command and the document export window comes up. You can see the different tabs for people, events, source, repository, and families on the document export window. Each of these tabs has various lists of items to be exported. The export of all of this information to Legacy by a single button click makes this function a very powerful tool. However, one of our underlying philosophies in providing this feature is that you, the user, must be in complete control of what gets exported. Clues will have already filled out everything based on its best guess of what you might want to do, but it's the user's responsibility to double check the details and ensure it's really the way you want things to appear in Legacy. At the top of the window, you can see the name of the document I am exporting, and at the bottom, the Legacy file that I will be exporting to. The People page shows the information about the people linked to my census document. It's exactly the same list as we saw when I showed the census document earlier. On the left side of each line is a checkbox. This is how we control which people will be exported to Legacy. If there were someone listed who was not of interest to us in our family tree, such as a boarder or a servant, we could uncheck the box and no information related to them would be exported. The names and data value column information comes from each person's main record in clues. This is what you would see on the main screen in clues's people grid or composite view. If I want to edit one of these values or control which values get exported, I click on the small plus sign to expand the data below the person. If I do not want to export the birth date, for instance, I can uncheck that line. Or I could edit a data item if I needed to correct a typo or change the format by clicking in the data values column. Okay, here I'm going to enter an invalid date format to demonstrate uh, another feature. When I enter the erroneous date, you see a red icon appears. This is a warning icon that may appear for various reasons while using the data export function. It's bringing something to your attention, which you can choose to fix or ignore. When you hold the mouse cursor over the field, the hint box will provide the explanation for the warning. In this case, it's telling me the date format or spelling has an issue. The red icon will also appear for a person when any of the details underneath that person have an issue. This is so that you can be aware that there's an issue when you have the records condensed. If I ignore the warning, this is what will be inserted into Legacy. In this example though, I'll just fix it and the warning will disappear. Any changes I make to the data here only apply to what gets stored in Legacy. The data includes is not changed. On the far right, you see the written column. Right now, nothing is appearing in this column. That tells me that none of these people and clues have been linked to a person in Legacy. Otherwise, the Legacy RIN would have appeared. It's very important that you pay close attention to this column. 
All of the people that do not have a RIN number entered will be set up as new people in the legacy file. If that person's already in legacy, you would then end up with duplicate people and would need to merge them using the legacy tools created for that purpose. If I jump over to my legacy file, I can see that there is a person by the same name. So I'll note his RIN and enter it into the RIN field on the export form. Notice how the information group automatically expanded and now shows the current legacy values for each of the data items. This is to prompt me to pay attention to what I'm doing and check that it is indeed the right person I am linking to. You can see in this case, I obviously have the wrong person since the birth dates are quite different. Selecting the right person to link to in Legacy is not a trivial exercise. If there is any doubt in your mind that clues and Legacy persons are really the same person, then create a new record in Legacy by leaving the RIN field blank. It's much easier to merge people in Legacy later on when you are sure than to sort out the mess caused by linking the wrong records together.